In today's video, we explore the ancient mysteries of Warhammer 1st Edition as revealed in the First Citadel Compendium, published way back in 1983. Well, hi folks, and welcome to the channel. I'm Lee, your old hammered host. Today, we're going to explore the secrets of the very first Citadel Compendium, a self-described irregular journal, which was published by Citadel Miniatures way back in October of 1983, so almost 40 years ago. This was back when White Dwarf called itself the Role Playing Games Monthly and devoted most of its coverage to RPGs such as Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, RuneQuest, and Traveler, as well as the newly released Warhammer Mass Combat Fantasy Role Playing Game, which was published by Citadel Miniatures and distributed by GW. In contrast to White Dwarf, the Citadel Compendium focused entirely on promoting Citadel Miniatures products, which included illustrating Citadel's entire range for the first time, as well as publishing clarifications, scenarios, and additional rules for the first edition of Warhammer. This publication also includes basic guides for painting and converting Citadel Miniatures, which we'll look at in a minute. All right, let's crack open this ancient tome and see what Citadel was up to in the heady days before Warhammer 40k. Here is the welcome page written by Citadel's co-founder, Brian Ansel, who would later become Games Workshop's managing director. The White Dwarf staff, much later on down the road, would write a secret message to Mr. Ansel in White Dwarf issue 77. We posted a video about that a little while back, which you can check out if you're interested. So in the welcome, Brian says that the compendium is Citadel's attempt to illustrate its entire range for the first time. He also says that since printing photographs is a rather unpredictable process, they are using illustrations to show you what their miniatures actually look like. So as you will see, there are lots and lots of illustrations in the 1983 compendium. Also, Brian encourages Citadel customers to contribute comments, suggestions, and articles for upcoming compendiums by sending them directly to him. So yeah, you could literally send a letter to the top guy at Citadel Miniatures and he would probably read it. So as I said, much of this issue is dedicated to Warhammer First Edition, which makes a lot of sense because it was kind of a combination mass battle game and an RPG, both of which were tied to Citadel's miniature lines. So along those lines, the issue kicks off with several pages of rules amendments, clarifications and modifications for Warhammer First Edition, many of which were in response to player feedback. So here are rules on using mounted figures, additional monsters such as the Unicorn and the Pegasus, magicians and armor. So I guess there was a little bit of a brouhaha because uh, in first edition Warhammer, magic users could wear full armor and shields. So they had to temper that somewhat by saying you can't cast spells if you're carrying a shield. And if you're wearing armor, you might be more likely to fumble your spell. So I guess that was kind of a compromise between the pro armor and anti armor factions. Then here are some rules for using vampires in the game. Quite a lot of them, actually. Then here we find a new Warhammer scenario, the legend of Kremlo the Slon. So this is the tale of an orphan Slon who washed up on the shores of southern Lustria, where he was adopted by a Norse chieftain named Harold Stoutback. So anyway, while Chief Stoutback is out on campaign with most of the warriors, the village is attacked by some half-crazed Slon hooligans emerging from the ocean. So Kremlo rallies the local fishermen and some drunken berserkers and repels the invaders. Then he leads a counterattack by boat against the Slon stronghold of Zapotec. So it is a two part scenario, defend the village, attack the pyramid. Over here we have some random rules for alcoholism and some safety tips for Citadel miniatures. Essentially reminding folks that these are not toys, they're made out of lead, do not put them in your mouth and do not give them to small children. Okay, so over here we have some rules for intergoblinoid animosity. So just because you've recruited a bunch of goblin regiments for your army doesn't mean they're going to get along and they may break ranks and attack each other at an inopportune moment. And here is a giant citadel giant. So uh, that's a lot of lead. All right. So now we're going to turn to the citadel miniatures section of the compendium. And as you can see, it's mostly illustrations, which is kind of bizarre, but I guess they were struggling with their photography, so they went the illustration route. So here are fighters, and in a way this is kind of neat because someone has gone and illustrated representations of all the various miniatures. So I don't know exactly how accurate these are, but uh, the pictures are kind of fun to look at anyway. 
So we have more fighters over here. Quite a lot of fighters, but I guess that would make sense. You need a lot of fighters if you have an RPG and a mass battle game going on at the same time. Okay. So here we have a variety of wizards and clerics and dwarves and sneaky thieves. And then here's a bunch of goblins, armored orcs, a variety of giants, and creepy crawlies. So as it said in the welcome message, they are attempting to illustrate their entire line. I don't know if they were 100% successful, but there are a lot of different illustrations here. These are uh, Chaos Knights here. And then the Slon. I wish I had some of these old Slon figures. They look pretty cool. And the Norse. There's some Norse warriors. And there's Kremlo himself. So that is the guy from the scenario earlier in the book. Then we get into some specialty sets. And as you can see, there's some photography here. So some of their specialty sets include the Warriors of Chaos. Here is a, a goblin raiding party. Warrior Knights of Law. The Dwarf King's Court. We got some Knights of Chaos down here. Adventurer starter sets. Here are some early Chaos Marauders and an Orc War Machine. Then over here we have a reference to two supplements for Warhammer First Edition. This is Forces of Fantasy. It was described as the first supplement to Warhammer containing a host of additional rules and suggestions to increase the scope of the game. Things like a point system for troops as well as new rules, monsters, spells, and more. This second supplement here, Realm of Chaos, is described as taking you through the dominions of the strange and terrible chaos gods, but I'm not sure if this was actually published for Warhammer 1st Edition. Obviously, GW published Realm of Chaos for a third edition, I think it was, about five years later, but I don't know if they ever had a Realm of Chaos supplement for the 1st edition, if I'm wrong about that, or if you have any additional details, please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to know about it. Okay. Here's something interesting we've covered before. This is an early reference to Rogue Trader, back when it was kind of being formulated as an RPG and not a tabletop miniatures game. And here is the absolute beginner's guide to painting miniatures. And as you can see in lieu of photography, they presented hand-drawn illustrations. So no expense was spared. And then an article on using science fiction weapons in Warhammer. So as we've discussed in previous videos, if you were a Warhammer fantasy player and uh, you wanted to include needlers and hand flamers and auto guns in your games of Warhammer fantasy, you certainly could because Warhammer 40K was still four years away at this point. Here are some additional rules. These are all written by Rick Priestley, by the way. So we have bolt guns, grenades, flight packs and such. And here's even more rules for science fiction and Warhammer. So they devoted quite a few pages to this concept in the first edition of the Citadel Compendium. So obviously something was germinating in the offices of Citadel Miniatures and Games Workshop that would eventually become Warhammer 40K Rogue Trader. And then we have some Mark of Chaos rules. So perhaps this is a precursor to the Realm of Chaos stuff they referred to earlier. Here is a random generator of chaotic attributes, a random generator of not useful attributes, that's great, and some illustrations of what your uh, mutated chaos minions might look like, and they are pretty scary. And then finally, here's some suggestions on converting your Citadel miniatures, which was a much more difficult process back in the day when you were basically drilling and sawing into lead. So uh, yeah, the early converters were really dedicated to their craft. Okay, folks, that is a look at the first Citadel Compendium from way back in 1983, back in the days when it was still difficult to shoot a catalog shot of a lead miniature. So yeah, things have changed quite a bit in the last 40 years. But aside from that, it is very interesting to look back at these old publications and see some of the foundational ideas for Games Workshop's IP being kind of developed in very early stages back in the early and mid 1980s. So uh, pretty cool, actually, I think. All right, folks, that is a wrap on today's video. As always, thank you very much for stopping by. 
We'll be back soon with some more tabletop wargaming nonsense. But until then, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.